the legendary Nosori tank, which went through a lot in one year. And we calculated five effects. What you just saw happened only a month ago in August. A Ukrainian Leopard 2 tank hunting Russian soldiers through the streets of Pokrovsk. And to accomplish this task, a 120 millimeter barrel of pure firepower, destroying everything in its path. Few people know, but there's a big problem here. That same tank you saw dominating the streets. It's an easy prey and also a very expensive target. Because while it's hunting soldiers on the ground, thousands of Russian drones are in the sky hunting it. And unfortunately, they're winning this battle. To give you an idea of the scale of this problem, Russia launched more than 6,000 drones against Ukraine just in July. That's 15 times more than last year. And each of these drones can turn a multi-million dollar tank into scrap in seconds. The tanks, well, they're clearly losing the war. It's just that... The Russians didn't expect Ukraine to have an ace up its sleeve that could completely change the game. Want to know what's even more incredible? They're going to use their own Leopard tanks to do it, but not in the way you might imagine. To understand the genius of this solution, First, you need to see the size of the problem Ukraine faces in the sky. In July 2024, Russia launched 423 drones against Ukraine. It seemed like a lot at the time, but if you look today, it just looked like a rehearsal. Because just in July 2025, that number exploded to more than 6,000 drones. I'm referring to a 1,378% increase in just one year. And these numbers don't tell the whole story. Between March and May of 2025, Russia launched almost 8,000 drones with an average of 110 per attack. Every night, cities like Kyiv live under the constant terror of sirens, a deafening sound blaring for hours on end. And things get even worse. Russia has developed a frightening pattern. Every time there is a peace talk or an important diplomatic event, Putin orders a massive drone attack in response. A good example of this happened after the Istanbul talks in May, when Russia attacked Ukraine with more than 250 drones. And when Putin spoke with Trump on the phone in July, the response came that same night. 750 drones launched against Ukrainian targets. As for the Alaska summit in August, it was marked by an attack of almost 550 drones. And more recently, in September, Russia broke its own record with 823 drones and missiles launched in a single night putin turned drones into a weapon of psychological terror the air raid sirens in kiev sounded for 43 hours in a single week imagine living like this imagine trying to sleep work live a normal life when the sky could bring death at any moment but the real problem isn't just the number of drones, it's the cruel math behind every interception. A Russian Shahed drone costs between $10,000 and $50,000 to produce domestically. When imported from Iran, the price rises to $193,000. Even so, these are low amounts compared to what Ukraine needs to spend to defend itself. When Ukraine detects a swarm of drones approaching, it needs to choose how to respond. And all the options are economically disastrous. A missile from the infrared imaging system, tail thrust vector controlled system, for example, costs $485,000, while a Nizam's missile can reach up to $1,200,000. 
And I don't even need to mention the Patriot. A single missile reaches an impressive $4 million. Do you see the problem? Ukraine spends a $4 million missile to destroy a $20,000 drone. It's a war of resources that Ukraine, on its own, can't win in the long run. Ukraine still loses even if it intercepts all attacking drones. On the other hand, economically, Russia spends $200 million on drones and forces Ukraine to spend $2 billion on interceptions. Each intercepted drone is an economic victory for Russia, even when the drone is destroyed. And even worse, Putin manages to produce drones faster than NATO can produce expensive missiles. After all, Ukraine has hundreds of Leopard 1 tanks, which it received from several European countries. Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands sent these war veterans, which served for decades in their armed forces. These tanks were built in 1965, at a time when German engineers believed that heavy armor had become obsolete. The philosophy was simple. If new anti-tank weapons can penetrate any armor, why carry extra weight? It's better to invest in mobility and firepower. So, the Leopard 1 was designed with armor of only 10 to 70 millimeters of steel. It's enough to withstand machine guns and small automatic cannons. But as you just saw, it's inadequate against modern weapons. In today's war, any drone, kamikaze, or anti-tank missile turns these tanks into ovens. That's why most of the Leopard 1S were sitting in storage, waiting for a mission that never came. A Ukrainian soldier from the Da Vinci unit explained the problem directly. Our drones now burn enemy vehicles while they're still approaching our lines. If our drones do that to Russian tanks, Russian drones do the same to our Leopards. It became clear that using a Leopard 1 in a frontal attack today is practically a death sentence for the entire crew. The armor, which protected against weapons from the 60s, is practically like paper against drones from 2025. And that's where the engineers from Heinmetall come in. They saw an opportunity where others saw a problem. What if the weakness of the Leopard's 1 could become a strength? What if the thin armor, which made them useless in ground combat, made them perfect for a completely different mission? Air defense doesn't need heavy armor. It needs mobility, speed, and the ability to reposition quickly. And in that, the Leopard 1 excels. With its 830 horsepower MTU engine, the Leopard 1 can travel at 70 km per hour on roads and has a range of 600 km. It can keep up with any mechanized formation and quickly get wherever it's needed. And then came the revolutionary idea to completely remove the original turret and replace it with something entirely new. The Leopard 1's combat turret weighed 10 tons and carried the 105 mm cannon. In its place, they installed something that looks like it came out of a science fiction movie, the Sky Ranger Air Defense System. The Sky Ranger turret weighs only four and a half tons half the weight of the original turret. This not only reduces the total weight of the vehicle, but also significantly improves its agility and acceleration. The chassis now carries less weight and performs better on rough terrain. And inside that compact turret, the cutting-edge technology would make any military engineer from the 1960s believe in aliens. The heart of the system is a 35mm original equipment manufacturer revolver cannon, which fires a thousand rounds per minute. To give you an idea of the speed, that's 16 rounds per second. It's like a machine gun. But firing cannon shells, the effective range reaches up to 4,000 meters against aerial targets, creating a massive defensive bubble around the vehicle. Inside that bubble, any drone that enters has only a few seconds to live. The turret carries 252 rounds ready to fire, enough to engage multiple swarms of drones before needing to reload. 
and the system can switch between automatic and manual mode, depending on the situation. But here we come to a surprising detail. Why aren't these regular shots? The real magic is in the A-head ammunition. When you fire an A-head round, it doesn't need to hit the drone directly. It would be impossible to hit a two-meter target flying kilometers away with absolute precision every time. Instead, the ammunition uses innovative technology. This data is instantly sent to the fire control computer. The computer is already tracking the target with precision radars. It calculates the exact trajectory of the drone, the projectile's path, and determines the perfect point in space where the two will meet. At the exact moment calculated by the computer, the electronic fuse detonates and this explosion releases the real charge. 152 tungsten projectiles. These projectiles form a deadly cone-shaped metal cloud. The density of this cloud is calculated to ensure that it's statistically impossible for any drone to pass through unharmed. The Russian drone then flies straight into this wall of tungsten and is literally shredded. Engine, electronics, control surfaces, structure, everything is destroyed simultaneously. Practical tests show the devastating effectiveness of the system. A swarm of eight drones was neutralized with just 18 shots, with most of them being destroyed in the first six shots. And here is the most brilliant part of this whole operation. An A-head round costs only $4,000. $4,000 compared to $4 million for a Patriot missile. Ukraine can fire a thousand A-head rounds for the price of a single Patriot missile. It can fire 250 for the price of a Nazan's missile. It can fire 112 for the price of an Iris T missile. And remember the Shahed drone, which costs $20,000. The A-head round costs less than the drone it destroys. Ukraine has finally turned the math of war in its favor. Now, it's Russia that loses economically with every engagement, even when its drones manage to fly. But the Sky Ranger system isn't just the cannon and the smart ammunition. It has state-of-the-art eyes and brain, which make all the difference between a good system and a revolutionary one. The system uses active electronically scanned array radars, which constantly scan the sky. Unlike old mechanical radars that spin like dishes, these radars can track multiple targets simultaneously in all directions. When they detect something suspicious, a dedicated tracking radar takes over. This radar has extremely high scanning speed and millimeter precision, capable of tracking even small drones flying in formation. When a swarm of Russian drones approaches, the system automatically prioritizes the threats. Closest drones first, then the fastest ones, then those flying toward critical targets. The time between detection and engagement is measured in seconds. Now, each Leopard tank equipped with Sky Ranger can protect a 4 km X, 4 km area. And since it's mounted on a mobile chassis that travels at 70 km per hour, it can quickly reposition itself to wherever the threat is greatest. I need to tell you something. This concept works not only in theory, but has already been proven in practice. Ukraine uses the GEPAR, an older system based on the same basic principle. Ukrainian crews report a 90% success rate against drones, Shayhead. And the GEPAR is essentially the grandfather of the Sky Ranger. It also uses a Leopard 1. Chassis also has 35 MM cannons, but uses 1970s technology. Even so, it has been devastatingly effective. Ukrainian soldiers describe the GEPAR as the best weapon against Shahed drones. Battlefield reports document individual crews shooting down dozens of drones and even cruise missiles. The good news is that 
In September, Rheinmetall signed a contract worth hundreds of millions of euros to supply Sky Ranger systems to Ukraine. With each system, costing about $12 million, this suggests dozens of these drone hunters arriving by the end of 2025. As you can see, the success of this system could redefine how armies around the world think about air defense. Military doctrine is changing in real time, forced by the reality of the battlefield. When tanks can no longer advance on the front line, turn them into sky hunters. When expensive missiles become economically unsustainable, go back to smart cannons. When war changes, adapt, engineers of the world. Listening to prey is a lesson about adapting in wartime. Victory doesn't go to those with the most expensive or newest technology. It goes to those who can best adapt what they have available to face real threats. Now, I want to know your opinion. What did you think about this transformation of obsolete tanks into drone hunters? Do you believe this concept will be used in the future or is it just a temporary solution? Leave your answer in the comments. If this content helped you better understand this revolution in modern warfare, subscribe to the channel and share the video. See you next time.